Good day. Greetings. I hope you are well. Welcome to lecture number one, titled, uh, What is Spiritual Formation? A question I intend to answer uh, during this session. So, here you are, taking a course titled, Orientation and Ministerial Formation. And probably wondering why this is required, or, or even what the heck is meant by ministerial formation? And why am I starting to talk about spiritual formation? Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, before we can get to the ministerial formation, we have to ask what the heck is spiritual formation because they're very closely and tightly related. And this is context for the course, for the rest of our semester together and essential to understanding up front what we are talking about and some of the terms that will get thrown around by me in this course. It's vital that we do this. But before I jump into the lecture for this module, I want to call your attention to the first of the texts. We will engage Parker Palmer's little book, Let Your Life Speak. This is a short and I think potent book about the formation of one person, about change, about engagement, about a search for calling, and a wonderfully autobiographical personal answer in quotes that might turn out to be helpful to you as it was to me on this part of your journey. Palmer's personal story provides something of a paradigm, I think, of the journey we may all be on. As I said, it's a short memoir, but we will engage that book soon. So I encourage you to begin reading it now. Okay, on to the question of the day. What is spiritual formation? I'm starting with some fairly obvious statements, uh, but they are formational in developing our understanding of formation. So here we go. None of us is born a fully developed human being. I don't think anybody's going to argue with me about that. We all have to grow up, right? All of us are formed in nearly every aspect of our lives. We don't just happen. We're created beings. We're the result of bodily functions, but we're more than that, right? We're creatures created in the image of God. All of us have had mentors, parents, teachers, pastors, friends, uh, maybe persons who are formally mentors, maybe persons you might even call spiritual directors. All of us have been taught, we've all been to school, most, perhaps all of us, have been churched, like me. I grew up in church. I was raised in Sunday school uh, by my first Sunday school teacher who was named Bessie Peterson. We called her Sister Bessie, Sister Peterson, back in the day when everyone in church was either a brother or a sister. She was wonderful and creative and loving. She introduced me to the Bible and taught me some of the best of the stories and helped me to understand as much as I could as that child. She taught me that Jesus loved me and wanted me to be a good boy. She was my teacher from as early as I can remember being in church until I graduated into junior high and they turned us over to a man who theoretically could keep us under control. Because of Sister Peterson, I made my first commitment my first trip to the altar to get saved. Frankly, I didn't know what I needed to be saved from, but Sister Peterson mattered so much to me and thought we should, so we did. The whole class in the sixth grade, and I have never forgotten that experience. Those early years are what we call formational years, right? Many ideas and behaviors I have today, I learned from her and from my parents and others. Some I continue to struggle with. 
Some I still believe, and some are no longer, so to speak, part of my personal creed. Sister Peterson was an early influencer in my formation, the beginning of the journey that honestly led me right here speaking to you. I experienced safety and love. I experienced a sense of welcome and acceptance. I learned of Jesus as a loving, supportive, and forgiving friend. I learned it was okay to ask questions and important to listen for answers. And I learned how to love someone outside of my family who cared for me and wanted the best for me. She's the one who first introduced me to Jesus and started me on a journey with him that continues to this day and which has been the central joy and struggle of my life. Because all of us who follow Jesus, believers, have to answer that question, so what? That leads us into a discussion of spiritual formation. It's a question that leads us in, into um, all of life's issues when our life and our beliefs clash. A question that leads us into asking more often than not, so what? So what? So what? A never-ending journey because life throws us curves and we adjust or we hide or we break. How did this happen? Well, some by direct teaching, games, storytelling, showing up. But most of the important formational of my life, and I believe of everyone's life, grows from, as we used to say, being more caught than taught. All of us have had our questions. All of us have had our beliefs questioned. All of us have had our questions questioned, either by ourselves and life situation or others. And in the words of Peter, we've had to make our defense to anyone who demands for an accounting for the hope that is in us. That's 1 Peter 3.15. Another familiar teaching, this time from Paul, relates here as well. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. If we don't, we get stuck and we don't continue to grow. Nearly all followers of Jesus have been faced with the famous initials. Whether it was WWJD, what would Jesus do? Or for me, the more potent WWDJD, what did Jesus do? And as current, speaking of ministerial formation, as current or future leaders in the church, you will be faced by others struggling with the same questions. And we become influencers, for better and worse, in the spiritual formation of others. All of this connects to, responds to, grows out of our formation as followers of Jesus. So what, more specifically, is spiritual formation? On the website, George Fox University, a Quaker school in Newburgh, Oregon, gives us the following information or insight into this question, accompanied by some of my commentary. They say, we experience God as embodied beings. I would add to that or elaborate on that by saying that is we are physical, intellectual, social, psychological, and spiritual beings. And in the biblical context, we are also persons who possess the imago dei, the image of God. We're God bearers. We really can't experience God in any other way. Fox goes on and says, this experience includes our minds, what we know, and also our emotions, will, personality, and body. God wants to transform all of who we are, they say. We believe to be formed by the Holy Spirit in this way requires both participation 
and intentionality. This is not just accidental. So in this context, Fox says or asks, what is spiritual formation? And they answer that saying, Christian spiritual formation is the process of being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ for the glory of God and for the sake of others. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. The focus of spiritual formation is the Holy Spirit because one of the deep practices of spiritual formation is the practice of discernment, which is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit who guides this ongoing journey toward union with God. Our response, they say, is submission. Don't like that word very much, but it's at the heart of this process. Formation is an organic, lifelong, and holistic process involving right thinking, right behaviors, and right feelings of individuals and communities. It's not private. It's personal, but never private. And I would add, as future and current leaders of the church, we also bear a major responsibility for the formation of others, to play a role in the formation of others, and that we must give attention to that, certainly, and we will before the end of the course, but our own personal formation comes first. So simply, Fox says, spiritual formation focuses on the deepening of one's relationship with God. Discipleship, they say, often used synonymously with spiritual formation, is, I think, more specific and directly related to this course. Fox defines discipleship as the focus on the maturing of one's faith in the context of of particular beliefs and values of a faith community. Disciplers then, mentors, coaches, teachers, so forth, pastors, are respected and spiritually mature mentors and leaders in a faith community. And in the context of this course, the faith community that we are speaking of, of course, is the Christian faith community. This then is a brief introduction to what we will be doing and thinking about for the rest of the semester. And what follows is the process by which we online will respond to and process what we are reading and watching, experiencing, and hearing from me. Please follow the directions, specifically noting the due dates and times, and feel free to engage me by a text or email if you need any further clarifications. So turn to challenge number one on spiritual formation and follow through with the directions there. Again, I repeat, any questions, feel free to give me a call or a text or an email and I'll get back to you ASAP. God bless.